One minute. It's Sunday morning, and welcome to the Boulevard Church of Christ. Sunday morning worship, live and in color. Amen, somebody. Somebody ought to give God some praise because he's been mighty good to us. Amen, amen. We got through uh, last week with all the challenges that uh, we had to face, uh, but we're still on this side of dirt. Amen, somebody. And we are privileged and blessed to be in uh, the house of God. And all of that has taken place because of God's love. Don't ever think uh, that you all that good, that uh, you just automatically get blessed. You ought to try to be good, uh, but God blesses you because he loves you and he loves me. Amen. Amen. And we're just thankful to him for all of his goodness, continuous goodness uh, toward us each and every day of our lives. And because of how God loves us, he wants us to display and manifest that same love right. one toward the other. Because in so doing, this is how the world knows that we belong to God. Right. So say this with me. We love, we love because, God first loved us. because God first loved us. Pointing all your neighbors around you and say, I love you. I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen, amen. You, you can't limit my love. Uh, amen, because I'm going to love you just like God wants me to love you. We're equally grateful to God uh, for his love because he loves us enough to give us this great privilege uh, in prayer to go before his majestic throne. Anytime, day or night, to lay our petitions at his feet. Uh, we have this privilege because he loved us enough. We were in sin. Right. But God loved us enough to give us Jesus. To die for us. To break down that, uh, to do away with that middle wall of petition. And now, uh, we have direct access to God. Somebody ought to say amen cause of this privilege that we have in prayer uh, as always we share these various prayer requests uh, on behalf of those who have made their requests known uh, we ask that if you will uh, we trust that you have your prayer journals with you uh, and if you will as we share these various prayer requests uh, please take these requests down in your journals and in your personal devotional time, talk to God on behalf of these uh, who need prayer. We will continue to be in prayer until God answers. Amen. Amen. Be in prayer. Continue to be in prayer for Brother Brandon Woods, uh, who had a procedure on last week. Uh, the procedure was successful. I understand he's in a little bit of pain, but uh, he's doing good. So let's continue to be in prayer. Uh, for him. Be in prayer for Sister Ophelia Simpson. This is the mother of Sister Edwina Wiggins, the wife of Brother James Wiggins. Uh, her mother uh, had a fall and bumped her head. And um, Brother Wiggins mentioned this morning that uh, she, uh, I believe she's out of the hospital, but uh, still, they're still doing some follow up tests. Uh, so let's continue to be in prayer. Sister Wiggins is there with her. So let's continue to be in prayer for the mother uh, of Sister Wiggins, uh, Sister Ophelia Simpson. Be in prayer for many of our Boulevard family who are traveling. Uh, this is family reunion season. 
and a number of our Boulevard family are out of town traveling uh, on this week. Uh, many are traveling for other reasons, so uh, we have a number of our family who are out of town, so let's be in prayer for all of those who are traveling. Continue to be in prayer for all of our Boulevard family uh, who are sick and shut in, uh, those who are still going through uh, bereavement, particularly we want to continue to be in prayer for Sister Carolyn Williams uh, and the Williams family uh, during that time of, of bereavement and many others uh, who have lost loved ones recently uh, and not so recently. Let's continue to lift all up in prayer our senior members uh, who are dealing with health challenges uh, let's continue to lift them up in prayer uh, as well. Go with us now as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Oh, Lord, our Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And Father, we thank you for being uh, a mighty God. Uh, thank you for being uh, the majestic God. Thank you for being our God. Thank you, Father, for uh, being omniscient omnipotent and omnipresent. Uh, Father, you bless us right where we need to be blessed. And Father, we thank you for uh, being better to us uh, than we've been to ourselves. Thank you, Father, for this great privilege that we have, uh, first of all, for being members of uh, the body of your Son, loved us enough to give us Jesus to die on Calvary for our sins. Thank you for saving us and for allowing us to be uh, members of this great institution, the Church of Christ. And Father, we thank you for the privileges that have been afford, afforded to us because uh, we are now your children. And Father, we especially thank you for this privilege of prayer in which we are able to come before your majestic throne, uh, lay our petitions at your feet and find help in times of need. And so we come on behalf of those who have made their requests known. Uh, Father, we uh, engage in continuous prayer on behalf of Brother Brandon Woods, who uh, had a procedure on last week. We thank you for a successful procedure. And we ask your continued blessings on his behalf uh, as he continues to uh, recover and go through rehabilitation and we pray Father that all will continue to go well with his health uh, as he deals with uh, pain we ask that you will uh, bless that pain to be managed uh, and that you will continue to bless him uh, to grow stronger be with Sister Dana as she ministers to him and labors by his side. Give both of them strength uh, as they continue to grow stronger. Father, we ask your blessings for Sister Ophelia Simpson. This is the mother of Sister Edwina Wiggins, uh, who had a fall uh, on last week. And Father, we uh, first of all thank you for not allowing this situation to be worse. We just ask, Father, that you please uh, continue to be with her as the doctors continue to uh, give her care and continue to uh, engage her in various tests. Father, we pray that all will continue to go well with her health and that she will grow stronger uh, and soon be restored to a reasonable portion. We ask your blessings for Sister Edwina as she is there with her and other family members, particularly we ask your blessings for travel. Uh, keep her safe and bring her back uh, at the appointed time, safe and sound, to find all well. Father, we pray for many among our number uh, who are traveling. Uh, Father, we ask that you please uh, put your arms of protection around them, uh, that they will reach their destination safely, that they will be safe while there, Bless them, Father, to return home safe at the appointed time and find all well. Father, for many among our number who are sick and infirm, particularly those of our 
um, two, two of members. We ask your continued blessings on all of their behalves. Uh, Father, just ask for strength, uh, for comfort uh, as they deal with health challenges. Father, be with us as extended family. Uh, as we seek to be a source of comfort and strength for them, uh, as we seek to minister to their needs. And Father, we just ask that if it is your will, that you will bless them uh, to be able to be with the people of God uh, in this place, uh, if it is your holy and divine will. For those who are going through uh, bereavement, Father, we just ask that you please comfort and strengthen as only you can. We thank especially now Sister Carolyn Williams and the Williams family uh, during their recent loss, the uh, Rogers family uh, during the loss of uh, Brandon Rogers that was memorialized on yesterday. And we just ask, Father, for your comfort and grace uh, on behalf of all those who, who have lost loved ones. And Father, we ask your blessings for this nation, for the world. We are dealing with so many trying times. So much evil looms about us. And Father, we, uh, we strive to understand why such things much, uh, must be. But Father, we know that uh, this is nothing new to you. And Father, we're grateful that you're still on the throne. And you're still well able. Help us to keep our hands in your hands, knowing that you're able to make a way. Now, God, as we prepare to engage in this worship experience, assist us in laying aside all things uh, that might hinder us, that might distract us, and help us to focus solely on giving you the worship that you desire, and that is in spirit and in truth. May we be edified. May the devil be horrified. But most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. In the name of God's gift from glory, in Jesus' name, let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Someone left this on uh, one of the pews. Uh, we will have it uh, in the office. It looks real, but uh, if this is yours, you can, you can come and claim it. God bless you. Good morning, good morning. It's me again. 684, this world is not my home. This world is not my home. We'll do all three stanzas. Check your devices. Lift your voices and look up at this screen, and we're going to sing songs to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know. I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that one thing I know, my Savior, pardon me, and I'm on where I go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. 
just up in glory land where eternally the saints on every hand are shouting victory. The songs are sweetly prayed, drift back from heaven's flow, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven, open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen, amen. Hold to God's unchanging hand, 244. We'll do one, two, and four, one, two, and four. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. No honor if on milk can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. You are the hope to God's unchanging hand. Everybody are the hope. To his hand, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hands, to God's unchanging hand. You ought to be your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you whatsoever years may bring if by earthly friends for sake still more closely to him cling everybody or the whole to his hand hold on to God changing hand everybody ought to hold to his hands to God's unchanging hand you ought to be your hopes on things eternal you ought to hold to God's unchanging hand when your journey is completed if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home in glory, your a just so will view everybody ought to hold to his hand, hold on to God, changing hand, everybody ought to hold to his hands to God's sunshine in hand, you ought to be your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging in hand, everybody ought to hold to his hand. Hold on to God's unchanging in hand, everybody ought to hold to his hands to God's unchanging hand, you ought to be your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading comes from John chapter 4, verses 20 through 24. Again, that's John chapter 4, verses 20 through 24. Our fathers worshiped in this mount, and ye say, that in Jerusalem is the place where men are to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, 
the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem. Worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. Ye know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such worship him, to him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I just read to you John chapter 4, verses 20 through 24. Good morning. Good morning. Would you pray with me, please? Oh, gracious Father, we are so humble and thankful for the be here before you this morning, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings you continue to store on us, and we thank you for your son, Jesus, through him that, and his sacrifice that we have that opportunity for eternal life. Father, we thank you for this fellowship this morning. We thank you for all those that are here. And Father, we're praying that our minds and spirit are focused on you as we uh, worship you in spirit and truth. Father, we're thankful for the confidence that you give us each and every day as we're able to navigate. We have the confidence of peace. We have a con confidence of assurance and and the confidence of not to be fearful. We're so thankful, Father, for that that you instill in us. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the, his example that, that he left for us to live by and to study. We thank you for, most of all, his sacrifice. Father, we're praying now on behalf of, of those that are sick among us. Father, we ask that you be with our long sufferers, our matriarchs and patriarchs of this congregation. Father, continue to give them comfort. And Father, we praying that those that are caring for them would uh, demonstrate the love that you would, that they would have, that you would expect them to have for them. Father, we are also praying for our, our children and our youth. Father, we're so thankful for those that we had just recently uh, put you on and, and, and Christ on as 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 they working out our soul their soul salvation along with us. We're so thankful to, for them, Father. We're asking that that there will be others as well, and they will be the example for others to look to and glean to to want to know uh, that uh, what they have in their life as they go forward. Father, we're we're so thankful for those that are, are, are pouring into their children and, and their children are following uh, their footsteps. And we're so thankful, Father, that, that we have the opportunity to be that example for them. We're praying that we continue to be the example that they will look to and be, and be able to go forward as well. Father, we are also praying for those that are traveling. Uh, we have the Kathy and the Carter family that are traveling for family reunions. We have Sister Miller is traveling. And we have those that will be traveling this week. And Father, we ask you give them traveling grace. And those that are traveling along with them will have the same mindset. And they will also uh, have the grace as well. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to lift you up and to render this service. And Father, we're praying that the service that we render will be pleasing and accepting in your sight. And you would see that we are, are, are thankful for you and, and, and the opportunity that we have to worship you. Father, we're praying for our country and the city and in this world for peace. Father, we're praying for hearts that will change hearts that would not see war but see peace not see division, but see working together and see uh, all of us as one. Father, we're praying for the upcoming elections, Father, that there will be no more uh, turmoil, that we would be able to have a peaceful country. And as it goes forward, we're praying that, uh, that also to those that are dealing with turmoil, for Father, that they will 
their leaders will come to, to agreement and also give them peace and, and as they can lift you up and praise you and worship you in peace. Father, we ask you to continue to keep us all. <clears throat> as we go further in this service, we're, pleasing, we're praying that it be pleasing and accepting your sight. These and other blessings we ask in your son's dear name, we pray. Amen. As Brother Black was praying, I was sitting there thinking, and I come up with this song. I'm glad I know you. I'm glad you know me, know me, know me. We praise our God. We're one big family. We lift our hands, we lift our hands, Lord. To reach the sky, the sky, and I am so glad, so glad, so glad you gave your life, your life, your life. I'm glad I know you, you, you. I'm glad you know me, know me, know me. We praise our God. Uh, uh, we're one big family. We lift our hands, we lift our hands, Lord. To reach the sky, the sky, and I am so glad, so glad, so glad you gave your life, your life, your life. in this life, whatever challenges, uh, whatever hills, uh, I have to climb. I don't have to climb them by myself because I got a God on my side who is able uh, beyond me to make all grace abound because he's good and not just some of the time. But he sure enough do all the time. That's why we ought to be glad each and every day of our lives that we have this blessed privilege of being able to be called children of God. I would not want to try to make it in this life without being a child of God. Amen, somebody. So good to see you this morning. As always, we're always uh, happy to be uh, in the house of God with the people of God as we attempt to try to do the will of God in uh, this place. To all of our guests and friends, we'll recognize you uh, at the close of this worship, but uh, we just want you to know on the front end, we're glad you're here. Uh, because there are other places that you could have gone in this city, uh, but you chose to visit with us, and we don't take that for granted. So uh, we will recognize you uh, in a personal way uh, at the close of this worship. To all of our brothers who have led us thus far in this worship, we thank you for the fine way in which you have led us uh, on this morning. And for those men who uh, are yet to, yet to come, we thank you as well uh, because we know that uh, you will equally uh, lead us 
to God. Thank you for your prayers on our behalf as we traveled uh, on last week. Had a wonderful time uh, at the reunion and uh, even in the midst of all that turmoil. I was trying to get up there. Amen. We, uh, we were able to uh, get back without any uh, problems. And so we, we, are, we are thankful to you for your prayers. From the text that was read into your hearing on this morning, uh, John chapter 4, the verse is 20 beginning. Uh, just a couple of thoughts from this uh, text and we'll be finished. John 4. Uh, verse 20 begin and I will talk worship in this mountain and he said that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship Jesus said unto her woman believe me the hour will come when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father ye worship ye know not what we know what we worship salvation is of the Jews but the hour cometh and now he is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the last few weeks, we have been trying to make our case relative to attending worship and Bible study because in a couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, we, we are looking to go to back to Sunday evening worship. Right. And so we've been trying to, to make a case relative to uh, not to assemble the time, uh, but we've been trying to make a case relative to in Bible study and in our Sunday morning messages. We've been trying to make our case relative to our attitude, uh, our mindset toward God and about God, because when, when we have the right attitude, when we have the right mindset, uh, uh, so many times won't be an issue. All right, all right. Uh, when we last uh, stood in this place, we, we tried to bring a thought from Nehemiah chapter 8. Right. And we talked about uh, an attitude of adoration uh, toward and about uh, the Almighty. And so this morning, as we continue to uh, try to build uh, on that point and make that case uh, and we encourage you, if you've not been coming to Bible, Bible study, you ought to come. Amen. Amen. We're having a good time in Bible study. Right. Uh, you, you, you ought to come. But this morning, uh, I, for a few minutes, this thought as we as we kind of engage in this study, the worship that God wants and not what I want. The worship that God wants and not see we, we, we end up making it about us. The worship that God wants and not what I want. One of the most controversial subjects within the body of Christ for years uh, has been this issue of worship. Right. And the unfortunate truth is that we have made everything and everybody wow. the object of worship but God. All right. All right. We seek to be thrilled and tickled. All right. Excited and exhilarated stimulated and stirred. And all the while, we fail to ask ourselves, right. 
is what I desire for worship is what God intends for me to get. Is what I want the same thing that God wants for me? It is the goal that I have set, the same goal that God wants for me to reach. And so the real question that ought to be asked is, am I engaging in the worship that God wants and not what I want? There are two things that I believe he shows us that I want to try to make a feeble attempt to try to bring it out uh, from, this, from this text. He'll show us, first of all, if we engage in the worship that God wants and not what I want, to do that, there must be a disposition that displays faith and not our feelings. We have to worship in spirit, verse 24a. Then secondly, there must be a dedication that displays duty and not defiance. We'll worship in truth. Verse 24b. As we attempt to labor from this thought, the worship that God wants uh, and not what I want. Contextually, as this chapter begins, Jesus is dealing with the envy of the Pharisees because they had heard that he baptized more disciples than John. But when you have the wrong information, you'll end up having the wrong motive. Because in verse 2, the Bible says that Jesus didn't baptize anybody but his disciples did see that's how that's why you got to be careful uh, and who you listen to and make sure you always get the right information and so now jesus leaves judea and goes into galilee and on his way to galilee he has to go through samaria and while in samaria he comes to jacob's well intending to get water, and it is here that he encounters the woman of Samaria, and a dialogue ensues. Uh, and from verse 7 through verse 24, Jesus has a conversation with the woman concerning the well, uh, concerning her walk, and concerning her worship. What is interesting is that in Jesus' initial conversation with this woman, worship never comes up uh, until verse 20. And it is right after he makes the request of her to go uh, and get her husband. Uh, but, but instead of doing what she was told, she asked him a question. And some scholars believe that in, in an attempt to divert the attention away from her because uh, now she has been convicted of the fact uh, that she has sinned in her life. You, you know her background. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, she has been convicted uh, of the sin that she has. She begins to ask questions uh, about worship. But what she failed to realize is that Whenever you try to take a detour, the Lord has a plan for you to be delivered. Sometimes we try to go around situations in our life. But uh, what God intends is for us to deal with these situations head on, head on because he has a plan uh, to bring us through whatever it is we're dealing with. In verse 19 begins. The woman says this. Uh, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. 
Jesus said to her, woman, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You don't know what you worship. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. The Samaritans believed in God but rejected the prophets and incorporated idols in their worship. But the hour cometh. And now he is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh, he desires such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Her focus was on the place of worship. But Jesus had to explain to her that the place is no longer the issue. But what you need to focus on is the person of worship. And if then the focus is on the person of worship, you need to understand and know something about the person whom you are worshiping. And the first thing that Jesus points out is that God is a spirit. So, uh, what does that mean? God is not a body. He is not material or, or composed uh, of parts. It means that he is limitless. There is no confining him. Uh, he is in every place. He is pure uh, and holy. Since then, he is a spirit. He does not dwell in temples made with hand. You can't limit God to a building. Right, right. Acts chapter 7 and verse 48. How be it the most high dwelling not in temples made with hands as said the prophet neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing uh, he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Acts 17 the verse is 25. So as a result a pure, holy, and spiritual worship because uh, the worship is not about a place. The object of worship is not about a place. The object of worship, worship is about a person, and that person is God. Right, right. So as a result, a pure, holy, and spiritual worship is what God seeks. The, the offering of the soul rather than the formal offering uh, of uh, the body, the, the homage of the heart rather than, uh, than the lips. That's why that, that there has to be a disposition that displays faith and not just our feelings. God ain't interested and how good worship makes you feel. But what God wants to know is how you feel about him. See, we get caught up in, in you know, when we come to worship, uh, well, you know, I didn't get a whole lot today because, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel, God ain't asked you. Where are you going to find in the Bible? What God asks you or is, it, is concerned about, well, how did you feel about the preaching today? How, how did you feel uh, about what the, God don't care nothing about that. God is concerned about how do you feel about him? How much do you love him? How much reverence are you going to give him? And what God wants when we worship is a proper state of mind. He wants the proper reverence and adoration for him. And if that is to take place, we have to worship in spirit. Philippians 3, verse 3. For we are the circumcision, which worship God, how? In the spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. We depend on God's spirit for strength and assistance 
laying our souls under his influence and operation. But we also must devote our spirits to and employ them in the service of God. When we worship, we worship in spirit because we have to get the flesh out of the way. That's why we have so many problems. Because, see, uh, uh, we, we are still, we're still trying to worship God with a fleshly intent and input when God wants a spiritual intent and input. And as long as the flesh is in the way, worship ain't going to ever be what God wants to be. Romans chapter 1, the verse is 9, but God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit, my heart, uh, uh, is the idea in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. Here's the problem when it comes to worship. We see worship at the restaurant. We come in, we place our order as to what we expect to get out of work. Okay, you go, uh, you know, some of y'all going to Cracker Barrel, where are you going for dinner after service? You place your order. There are expectations as to what you intend or what you look for back after you place your order. Some of us treat worship All right. just like going to a restaurant. Right. We'll place our order. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and if the order don't come out right, yeah. we'll, we'll place our order. Right. And then, you know, uh, the, pre the, the preaching uh, stayed in the oven too long. Oh, uh, it was undercooked. Uh, the, the singing uh, was dry. The prayer was stale. We, we put our order in. And if the order don't come back the way that we intended, the tendency is uh, we'll uh, start seeking a new restaurant. And, and when we find the restaurant that we're looking for uh, that fits uh, our order uh, the way that we want, then we're the, okay, this is where I want to be. But see, we missed the whole point of is this what God wants? Right right. Not one time have we asked ourselves the question, okay, this makes me feel good. I'm happy. You know, I got what I was looking for. Right. I put my order in, and it came back right. right. But is this what God ordered? Right. See, we missed the whole point. But what worship ought to be for a, watch this, for a true worshiper is a bank where you come in and make a deposit of love. You make a deposit of praise. You make a deposit of adoration and reverence. And then during the week, when the struggles start to stretch you out, when the trials start to test you, and hurts become a hindrance, and you go uh, to make a withdrawal from God's spiritual bank, you won't get a little uh, slip back that says insufficient funds because you've been coming to worship, placing your order, expecting God to serve you when God is looking for you to make a deposit and serve him. When we come to worship, we come to give to God. We come to make a deposit in God's spiritual bank. We talked 
uh, in the last lesson about the fact uh, when Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 8, uh, uh, verse 6, uh, he blessed God. And when he blessed God, the people said, Amen. See, when we come to worship, we come to be, when we come to give blessings to God, and when we give blessings to God, God will turn around and give blessings back to us. Until there is a disposition, an attitude, a mindset that displays faith and not just feeling, worship, Bible study, ministry, service, whatever the case might be, will never be meaningful and fulfilling because we make worship about ourselves and not about God. Let, let, let me move on first. Y'all struggling? He says, secondly, there must also be a dedication that displays duty and not defiance. Verse 24b uh, of the text. He says that worship to God must those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. The word truth essentially means sincerity. Uh, it means doctrine and, and, and profession. So, so when we worship in truth, we worship with a sincere heart inwardly, with a dedication to fulfilling whatever duties are associated with the true doctrine of true worship. In other words, everything that's associated with true worship. We're going to talk, talk about this some more in a minute. We are sincere. We dedicate ourselves to, to involving ourselves uh, with whatever those duties are that constitute the doctrine of true worship. So the question comes then, what constitutes true worship? Uh, or worshiping in truth. There must be preaching. Acts chapter 20. Uh, you know the text, 6 and 7, verse 7, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, read to depart on the mark, and continued his speech unto there must be preaching and teaching from the word of God. Right. Communion. Uh, Acts, or rather, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, verse 23 and 24. For I have received of the Lord, uh, of the Lord, therefore which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. You do this in remembrance of me. There must be praying, 1 Timothy. Uh, to what? He says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. You got to have scripture reading. Uh, Revelation 1, the verses 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. There must be congregational singing. Uh, Hebrews 2.12, uh, Ephesians 5.19, that must be given. 1 Corinthians 16, the verse uh, is uh, 1 and 2. Uh, and the problem comes in is that when we fail to carry out these duties in worship, it equates to defiance. When you sit there and don't sing, It equates to defiance. Because the Bible says that when we assemble ourselves together, there must be sin. 1 Corinthians 14, uh, Ephesians 5, 19. Speaking to who? Yourselves 
and signs of him. In worship, we speak to each other and encourage and edify one another through singing. And if you sit there and don't sing, you ain't defying the song leader. I don't like the way he's singing. You defying God. Ain't got nothing to do with the song leader. He might be off pitch. Look, sing anyhow. Where in the Bible you gonna find where uh, thou shalt sing on pitch? The Bible says sing. And if you defy, uh, or rather if you sit there and don't sing in worship, you ain't defying the song leader, you defying God. When you don't give. We have we have the mistaken notion of thinking that I, I can I can participate in, in everything and don't give and I worship. No, you haven't. Because see, for years folk have been taught that as long as you get communion. You worship. There are folks who used to get to worship uh, 15 minutes before communion was said. As long as they get communion, I work. No, you had if 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 you don't engage in the duty of worship, singing, praying, scripture reading, communion, and giving, you hadn't worshiped. Whatever, you know, some people have different methods of giving, different times, that we understand it, that's fine. You give it. But if you come every week and you don't ever give nothing back to God, when we fail to carry out our duty in the worship, it demonstrates itself, it, it manifests itself in defiance. And church, we need to understand that the defiance is toward and against God, not man. Because God has commanded and given us a guideline and instruction as to what he wants in worship. When we fail to carry out our duty in worship, what ultimately uh, it leads to is vain worship. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. This people draw a nine to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. It will often and does lead to ignorant worship. At 17 and verses 23. For as I pass by, and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. It leads to idol worship. Galatians 4, the verses 8. How be it then, when uh, ye knew not God, ye did service unto them uh, which by nature are no God. Church, when we have the right disposition for worship, we can, we can engage in the proper duty of worship. So, so what I'm trying to encourage you with this uh, on this morning, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to help you to understand as, as it relates to worship, Bible study, uh, this whole notion that we've been trying to put forth of developing the proper attitude uh, toward God uh, is we have to understand that it's what God wants. Right. Right. And it ain't about what I want. Right. 
Because when we do this, we will discover that worship will generate, uh, regenerate your soul. Worship will resolve your doubts. Worship will reshape your thinking. Worship will reduce your fears. When, when we worship the way that God wants, it will reaffirm your commitment. It will reform your attitude and replenish your joy, your satisfaction, your contentment as a child of God. But it has to be about God and not about me. Right now. Out of everything that I've said today, was to make this one point. Right, right. When it comes to worship, when it comes to service, you got to get out of yourself. Right. Get out of yourself. Because see, as long as you in, into yourself, as long as uh, I got you got a me mind, I attitude. Until you get out of yourself, you're never gonna get in, engaged in ministry. Right. You're never gonna be faithful uh, in servitude. Uh, you're never going to be faithful in Bible study, uh, in worship. See, until you get out of yourself, service times won't matter. And that's the whole point we've been trying to push people in Bible study. As we try to move toward uh, getting back to eating the work. See, some, some of y'all are sitting in here now, and you've already made up your mind. He can say what he wants to say. I ain't coming. <laughs> that's your choice. But as we talked about how the Bible class, choices have consequences. <laughs> so, I, you know, that's your choice. You know, if you make up your mind, uh, you know, I ain't coming back to eat the worship. I ain't coming back uh, to Wednesday night. Bible. That's your choice. And as long as you into yourself, that's the choice you're going to constantly make. The church, if, we, if we're going to be, if we're going to be a tithe, and, and we talked about this this morning, about the boulevard had, uh, rather, God has blessed the boulevard in so many ways. He has blessed us to do some tremendous things uh, in this community and in this city. But look at how much more we can do for God if everybody made it about God not about me. If everybody had uh, the attitude and the mindset of being here, worship, Bible class, Sunday evening, so that we get to know each other better. Fellowship is stronger. We got more people involved. We can, we can, we can do more ministry because we got more people involved because they want to be here and they want to be involved. They want to serve God. But until you get out of yourself, we're going to still work the same 30, 40 folks to death. Same handful of folks that we going to be engaged in every ministry. Because the majority of us are into ourselves. So church, I, look, I said this in Bible class this morning. Uh, and some, you know, many of you weren't in Bible class, so I'm going to say it again. I ain't fussing. Because, <laughs> see, y'all leave mad. You know, I, you know, I can't do nothing about you being mad. You know, uh, you can get mad, you can swell up, you know, you can dislike what I'm saying, you know, you can fight me. You know, but at the end of the day, the Bible's still going to say what it says. So, so, so my, so my point is, make up your mind. Do what God wants you to do. Stop looking for reasons and excuses. See, that, that's, our, that's our issue. That's, we, we look for reasons not to come. We look for reasons not to be involved. We look for reasons uh, not to engage in Whatever's going on. What God wants is for you to change your attitude about him. How you look at him. How you 
how you view him, how you feel about him. And when you do that, whatever he asks you to do, it's going to be good. Everybody with me? Now, I'm talking to somebody, talking to somebody this morning. Right? You, you know where you are. You know your spiritual life. You know that you, you've not been faithful. You know that uh, you made everything about you and not about God. You all in for yourself. And God don't, uh, God ain't on your schedule. At least right now. Don't keep putting it off. Well, you just had a memorial service yesterday. Man. Young man, 30 years old. You ain't got to get a hold of these yet. And if we old, we ain't got much time that we used to have. So, 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 let's, let's stop. Let's stop playing these games with ourselves. Cause let's let's talk to somebody who's foolish. We ain't foolish at all. Let let let's make up our mind to do some good. Amen. Let's make up our mind to make it about God and, and not about ourselves. And if you need, I mean, you know where you are. If you need prayer, right? Now, come on, man. Don't. You know, don't worry about what folk going to think. They probably got the same problem. <laughs> Come on, ask for the prayers of the righteous to help you. Be better. Be the kind of Christian that God wants you to be. Worship the way God wants you to worship. Praise God the way he wants you to praise him. Come on, ask for the prayers of the righteous. We'll, we'll help you right Somebody that's here today, you not said yes to Jesus. You not obeyed the glorious gospel. The good news. How Jesus came from the splendor of heaven. Came into a sin cursed world. Made up his mind in the midst of all that he went through, the suffering and the shame that he went through. He made up his mind and ain't going to turn back. Going all the way to Calvary because I want to do my father's will. He did that for sinful folk like you and me who didn't deserve it. He died for, for my sins and yours because he wants you and me to be saved. Amen. So if you're here today, you've not said yes to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. You ought, you ought, to, you ought to be baptized. You ought to say yes to you do that by hearing the word. Romans 10, 17. Believe in that same word. Uh, Hebrews 11, 6. Uh, repent it. Turn it from the way of the world. Turn it to the way of God. Your church in uh, 3 and 5. Confess in Christ. Make that grand confession that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, Matthew 10, 32, 33. Acts chapter 8, verse uh, 35. Following. Then be willing to be buried in the water grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. Acts 238, get up out of the water. A new creature, a new creation has been be faithful unto death. And God will give you a crown. They won't fade away. And then, then you can begin making everything about God. And not about you. Somebody just say yes to that. Just please do. Wait for your wife to come. If you need prayer, you remain standing where you are. If you need special prayer, come out one of these aisles. These brothers will assist you. If you need to be baptized, come ask them, what must I do to be saved? We'll baptize you. Just like they did in the Bible. In either case, won't you do it? Come on. As we sing in the song of praise. Sing it. I am weak, but 
Thou art strong to close the walk with thee, just to close the walk with thee. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Dear Lord, close to Thee, well, just a closer walk with Thee. Great is Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be, through this world of toil and snare and walk with thee if I falter Lord who can who with me my burden share let me Dear Lord, close to Thee, well, just a closer walk with Thee, just a closer walk with Thee, just a closer walk with Thee. Granny Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. He's well rested and well prepared on this day, July the 28th at 10.30. Our brother Jackson helped us to understand the worship that God wants and not the worship that we want or I want. He says when your worship is about the right person, you display the right faith and not favoritism towards self or selfish indulgence. Worship should be a bank. I know y'all brought some deposit this morning. I can look at all these beautiful, warm, friendly faces filled with compassion and love for your brother man. So when you come to church, you come to leave something. Part of you. Because you come to get something too, but you come to leave something. So you have to bring something with you to leave something. You know that, right? Okay. So we have several this morning who has responded to uh, the Savior's invitation. So we want to get this young lady up first. Uh, Kendall, Kendall Alexander, can you stand up, please? Kendall, come up here, please. Kendall has decided to put her Lord on in baptism. Amen. Kendall, there is an example for us as Christians of what we need to do to accept Christ and to let our fellow brothers and sisters know that we love the Lord and that we have committed ourselves to them. There was an example in Acts chapter 6 verse 38 of the Ethiopian eunuch that had been uh, bound worshiping and he was on his way back home and he had was reading Isaiah 23 about Jesus Christ who died for me and you. And, the, and the Philip went to him and he taught him uh, what it meant to have this faith. And after he teaching him he said 
you want to be baptized in his name. What does it take to be baptized? Is that if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he baptized you. So we give you the same opportunity now to make that confession if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. See, so believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now yeah. confess and go death to death. So we're going to take you straight away uh, over this way, and the ladies are going to go with you. We have those who are traveling, uh, asking for traveling grace this morning. Um, Sister Pat Kincaid is asking for traveling grace. Um, her and Brother Kincaid is going to be traveling this week, so we're going to keep them uh, in our prayers as they travel this week. Um, uh, Brother Kincaid is asking for special uh, requests for traveling grace, not only for his family uh, for going out of town, but he's also asked for traveling grace for his daughter and his granddaughter who's going back to Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, so we want to keep the Kincaid family in our prayers as they travel this morning, uh, this week. Uh, Sister Edna Eats is asking for prayers for health and for strength. And so we want to be praying for her as well this morning. Sister Keys is not feeling well. Uh, church, please keep her in your prayers. Uh, Sister Xavier Reed is asking the church to continue to pray for her uh, as she returns back to work. Uh, and there's, she said, there's much training and transition happening at her job, so she wants us to pray uh, for her continued uh, pleasant attitude. Uh, pray that she stand on the promise of God. So we want to make sure that we're going to continue to pray for Xavier. Uh, Sister Morgan Cannon. Sister Cannon is uh, saying that uh, she would like to ask for prayers for a friend of hers uh, who is having a difficult battle uh, with mental health, depression, uh, praying for healing and strength for Morgan Cannon's uh, prayer who is suffering at this time. Our sister Barbara Thomas is asking that we please pray for her son and her family for traveling grace and mercy uh, as they travel on vacation uh, uh, this week. Samantha Davis. Uh, Samantha Davis is asking, to pray, asking for the prayers of the church and asking and letting us know that she's having some problems uh, in her life and asking the church to pray for us. But she's asking us to pray uh, that she would be restored to her first love. She says, pray that I will be more faithful in uh, bringing my children up in the right way and in God's way. Uh, Sister Shelby Clark Lewis, please stand. Okay. Oh, there you are. Church, um, we have a new member uh, here that she's moving her membership. And uh, at this time, let's welcome her to the boulevard. Yes. Welcome to the boulevard. Sister Clark is now official. You are now a member of this church. We're so glad that you're with us. Uh, uh, and so Family Life 4, I'm sorry, Family Life 3, uh, would be your Family Life minister. He'll be contacting you. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have brought us to this point in this, for this day. Father, we thank you for all the things that you have put before us. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for understanding and the privilege that we have each time that we come into worship service that we're able to hear a word from you, that you're, you're able to brighten and, and open our understanding to expand us in ways, Father, to give us a greater knowledge of your will and for your purpose for us. And it might help us, Father, to grow and to do the things that we should do and how we should do them, Father. We're just pleased that on today you taught us more about worship to help us to know that when we come into this place together, that we come in to demonstrate our love and our compassion and our strength and our faith toward you most of all. But we bring our own uh, faith with us. We bring our own dedication, our commitment, 
to show you, Lord, how much we love you. We love you daily for the things you do, but we love you uh, throughout our whole life for all that you have done for us and through us. So when we come in to worship, Father, we're just glad. We're happy. We're ecstatic that we have this privilege to come before you and to dedicate and to show and demonstrate our faith, not only to you, but to help broaden our commitment to ourselves and to others as well. We just thank you for this message and for Brother Micah this morning for teaching us and showing us how we should come into worship and the things that we should do in worship. Father, we thank you for Sister Clark who decided to come and join us at the will of God. We just pray, kind God, that you will continue to bless and strengthen her and each of us. Help us to grow and mature in the same way and do the same things godly as you have or desire for all of us. We just thank you for her and for her presence on this morning. We thank you, Father, for the Kincaid family, uh, for Brother and Sister Kincaid. We just ask you to be with her and him as they travel and their granddaughter and their uh, uh, daughter uh, and all of those who are traveling, Father, and who, who are on the road. We just ask you to bless and strengthen them and keep them safe on their journeys. Allow them to reach their destination safely uh, and to find all well as they return home. Uh, Father, we ask you to be with Sister Keys as she's going through some health issues on today. We just ask you to continue to bless and strengthen her. We know that she has been dealing with some health issues for a while. We just ask you for your grace and for your mercy and for strengthening her to help her endure. And Father, we thank you for all those who check in on her and, and help uh, to encourage her, Father, as she faced difficult times of dealing with health. And all those as well, Father, who are seniors uh, who would not even be here because of health condition. We just ask you for your grace and healing grace and healing mercy in their lives as well. Oh Lord, we ask you to continue to be with Xavier Reed uh, as she's returning back to work in the school year. We know that this is a difficult time for teachers and for students uh, coming up. So we just ask you for your, uh, your favor to her, that you will keep her in the right mind with the right attitude. Uh, help her to be an example to all of those, not only students, but her coworkers as well as she worked with them and as they work out uh, plans and format their teaching strategies. We just ask you to bless and strengthen them, uh, to help them to do all the things that they desire, help them to share the knowledge and the abilities that they have with all those who attend their schools, uh, to bring them up, Father, in a way that not only spiritual, but give them an understanding and education to prepare them for the world as well. Just thank you for those who teach and guide our young people. Father, we ask you to be with uh, of, uh, Hannah, Morgan Cannon, even though we don't know her name, we know that you do. Lord, we know that this is a difficult time for many young people. We know that she's not the only one who's dealing with depression or mental illness or stress. We know that a lot of young people deal with uh, mental stress, Father. We ask you to enter now into her life. Help her and strengthen her. Give her the mindset and give her the ability to resolve issues in her life. Help her to build friendships and companionship, Father, that she can count on, that she can rely on, that she can depend on when she need words of encouragement, when she need to get an understanding to bring her peace, Father, to put the right people in her life to help her to go through these ordeals. And all of our young people who are going and struggling, Father, we just ask you to put the right people in their lives to give them guidance and help them to build comfort in who they are and what they do and say. Strengthen them physically, mentally, to be able to do, to be able to not only live in this world, but to be able to defeat Satan as he tried to tear them down. Father, we ask you for, to, to bless Sister Thomas and family this week uh, and her family for traveling grace. Be with them as they go on vacation, Father, that they may have an enjoyable time. Bless and comfort them and give, bring them peace that they may reach their destination safely and return safe home as well. Continue to bless and keep uh, them while they're on vacation. Father, we ask you to continue to bless Samandra Davis, Father. You, she has come this morning stating that she has fallen short of the victory and the glory, and the glory that you have in store for her. We just ask you to, to, to bless her uh, and strengthen her as she continues to strive and as she's uh, reinstated her commitment to you. Uh, we just ask you to strengthen her physically and mentally, that she's able to come to worship and that she's able to bring her children up in the ammunition and the words of the Lord. Uh, help her to teach those and, uh, young people at home and, and guide and direct them. And help us, Father, 
to be a comfort to her as we help, her, help us to even support her in the things that she desires uh, help with and help us to be a guide in life. Father, you know that we're all one family. Even though we might live in different places, we're all in the same community and we all have the same struggles in our lives. We just ask you to bring us together as a family here in the church and help us to be supportive to one another. Father, for all of those who are visiting with us who may not share our, with us in our faith, we ask you, Father, to look upon their lives, whatever conditions they might have, that you would strengthen them, Father, that you would edify them in a way, Father, that gives them peace and comfort them, Father. But we ask you most of all to help them to have an understanding of your will and your purpose. Help them to bring, help us to bring them closer to you through our own works and through our own lives. And help us to be able to teach and bring others to Christ. We actually bless their lives. Father, for those who have fallen short, who may be living uh, contrary to your will, those who may have committed sins, Father, we ask you to look upon their lives and to forgive them. Give each of us the grace and peace that, that will sustain us, but help us, Father, to grow. Help us to mature. Help us to conduct ourselves in a way that is beneficial to your kingdom. But help us most of all, as we walk our daily lives, that when others see us, they know that we have a relationship with Christ. Help us, Father, to be more like Christ. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and give you thanks always. Amen. They say that the angels came down from glory and they rolled the stone away. They say that the angels came down from glory and they rolled the stone away. They say that the angels came down from glory and they rolled the stone away, Jesus rolled with all power in his hand, O oh Lord, in his hand, Jesus rolled with all power in his hand, and Jesus rolled with all power in his hand, oh Lord, in his hand. They say that he died on Friday evening, but he rose one Sunday morning. Jesus rose with all power in his hand, oh Lord, in his hand. Upon this repentant believer's confession, that she believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I do now baptize her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. According to Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. This baptism is for the remission of her sin, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The Lord would then add her to his church, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 47, that church being the church of Christ, according to Romans chapter 16 and verse 16. Say something. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious God, our eternal Father, we humble at your feet. Giving you thanks for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. For this 
blessing moment that we have experienced of this young one saying no to the world and yes to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for her desire uh, to want to become a child of God. And we thank you, Father, for those who have been instrumental in her life and guiding and directing and teaching her uh, what thus saith the Lord. And we just ask now that you be with her as she begins her new walk in Christ. Uh, bless us uh, as her new family to walk with her and beside her uh, as we sojourn uh, together down the King's Highway, striving to make heaven our home. Bless her to be faithful uh, in Bible study, in uh, both publicly and in person and personally. Uh, bless her, Father, to be faithful in worship and doing those things uh, that will help her to grow and mature uh, to become the kind of Christian that she desires and that you desire for her. We thank you, Father, for all these blessings. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let us together say, Good morning, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> and now, let us prepare our minds and hearts for the communion. And let us look back to the cross where Jesus hung, bled, and died, and rose again on the third day. Jesus suffered a horrible death for you and for me. God is love in his very nature, and his love is revealed in many ways, in creation, in his wisdom, in his power, in his holiness, in his justice. What makes this justice <clears throat> so healing? God's mercy. When God often issued justice in one hand, he often offered mercy in the other. Then the desolation and disobedience and pride and sinfulness enter in and open a great gulf between God and his children. But God came to us. The gift of his only son surely reveals his, his, his love in an amazing degree. He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all. Jesus provided that golden combination on the cross, satisfying a just God while dispensing unto us his loving mercy. God's mercy is a stunning biblical gift. Jesus, when he was on the earth with his 12 disciples, taught them in the proper manner on how they should remember him when they took the Lord's Supper. Paul went on to record these teachings of Jesus in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I have also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also he took the cup. And after he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember the Lord's death and suffering until he comes. But whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore, let a man examine himself. So let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he that eateth and drinketh in an unworthy manner, eateth and drinketh judgment to his own soul, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sick among us, and many are asleep. We also can find in Acts chapter 20, and verse 7, Luke writes, Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, 
Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow. But he continued his speech until midnight, and there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. Let us give thanks. O most holy and divine and righteous Father, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, <clears throat> it is once again, dear Father, we come before your throne of mercy and grace. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for your darling Son who came and gave his life for the, for the sins of the whole world. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing us and keeping us in your loving and protection and forgiving us of all of our sins. We pray, Heavenly Father, you would look down and bless this bread, which represents your darling son's body, and this cup, which represents his shedded blood, which was shed for many. These and many other blessings we do ask in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name, let us all say. As we worship at the point of giving, <clears throat> as we try to point out this morning uh, from the message, uh, we, we should strive to uh, make it about God, do what God wants and not what we want. And Paul, in his second letter to the church at Corinth, encourages uh, the church at Corinth to, to do just that, particularly in the eighth chapter, around verse 24, uh, he says to them, as he uh, made them aware that he had talked to the Macedonians about his confidence in their giving, he says now in verse 24, show the proof of your love, uh, that you give in a manner that's pleasing to God and uh, today we got to show proof of our love uh, by the way that we give back to God because when we strive to do God's will making it about God and not about us we'll give in a manner that pleases him amen let's be mindful of that today as we worship with our gifts let's pray Eternal God, our Father, so thankful for this blessed privilege that you have given unto us to worship you at the point of giving. We thank you, Father, for all of your goodness toward us each and every day, uh, and that you bless us with all things that pertain to life and godliness, uh, blessings that are both uh, physical and spiritual. And Father, we thank you for... Uh, all that you have done and all that you are doing in all of our lives. And now as we prepare to give back to you, help us to give uh, in a manner that shows you that we make it all about you and not about us. And Father, our prayer is that the receiving of these funds be used with wisdom, guidance, and prudence as we seek to do kingdom business in this White Haven community in this city of Memphis and move in the world as our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let every heart sing. Amen. amen. Now, let church say amen. amen. We trust that you've been encouraged from uh, the word of God on today and that uh, uh, the word has truly blessed your life. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and we trust that uh, you will continue to be blessed uh, to all of those uh, who are our guests and friends on today. It has been our great joy uh, to have you here in our midst. Uh, there are other places you could have gone, but you chose to be 
uh, with the people of God on the boulevard because after all, the boulevard is a place of belonging that leads to a place of blessing. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. So if you're here uh, on today and you're visiting and you'd like to stand and let us know who you are and where you're visiting from, we want to give you that privilege. And those to my right, you're visiting. To my far right, you're visiting. You like to stand, let us know who you are, where you're visiting from. Any visitors? All right. Then here in the center, you're visiting. Any visitors? You like to stand, let us know who you are and where you're visiting from. Any visitors? All right. Then to my left, any visitors visiting with us today? Any visitors to my far left? All right, that means we got to get busy for next week Amen. and invite visitors. Thank you for being here, Boulevard family. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We appreciate your presence um, always. Um, if you miss getting your contribution in uh, or if you miss communion, please raise your hand uh, and our ushers will assist you. If you missed either of those, just raise your hand and uh, I will. Ushers will assist. Let me, uh, first of all, give a special uh, word of appreciation and thanks to uh, Dr. Chris Cathy uh, for standing in our stead on last Sunday. I understand y'all had a wonderful time. Amen. 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 And we, we appreciate your kindness uh, toward him as you do uh, with us and others who stand in this pulpit each week. Thank you for receiving him and we thank God for him uh, and his ability to stand and preach uh, God's holy and divine uh, word. I want to equally or in addition uh, give thanks to Family Life One on yesterday and others who may have worked with him uh, for assisting the Rogers family uh, in the memorial service uh, of uh, Brother Brandon Rogers uh, Family Life One and, and other Family Life groups, uh, whatever's needed, uh, you're always willing and ready uh, to come to the aid of these families uh, as they go through uh, their bereavement. So thank you, uh, Boulevard Church family. Uh, that's ministry. That's, that's what love and fellowship is all about. Amen. So, so thank you uh, for that. Uh, school supply and uniform giveaway uh, for White Haven Elementary. Uh, that is scheduled to take place this week. So uh, those, there are a couple of groups uh, who are working uh, with that. Those who uh, have gathered the uniforms and school supplies. Uh, we have the backpacks. They are here. Uh, so whatever you need from us to assist you uh, in those efforts, please let us know uh, because we want to try to get those to Whitehaven uh, this week, uh, if at all possible, because school kicks off. Ain't nobody saying amen. amen. <laughs> amen. School kicks off next week. Amen. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Students, teachers, parents, it's, it's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, and then uh, right around the corner, next, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, August the 10th, uh, is our annual health fair from 10 uh, until 2 p.m. We're looking forward to a grand time. Again, on this year, we have a number of people who've been working diligently uh, communicating uh, with our uh, vendors. I believe we have about 30 plus vendors. Amen. 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 Who is scheduled to be here uh, on uh, that Saturday, uh, August the 10th. So uh, you please plan to be here because if we're asking people to come to our house, it's impolite to ask people to come to your house and you ain't here. Amen. Amen. So Boulevard family, please plan to be here. We we have flyers, I believe, that have been printed today uh, out on all the desks. Yeah. So please, please take some, take them with you. Help us to get the word out to this Whitehaven community, neighbors, 
Uh, if you know of businesses that you can leave flyers with, please do so. We need to get to work. We're a little bit behind schedule as far as publicity, uh, but we need to, uh, we trust that you'll help us in getting the word out uh, for this grand event. We know God's going to bless us uh, to have a good time. Uh, the uh, mammogram uh, machine, uh, the mammogram uh, truck, uh, will uh, bus, yeah, yeah, that, that vehicle. <laughs> the mammogram bus will be here as well uh, on that day, as well as the bus from uh, Southwest uh, Community College. Uh, so uh, those who uh, plan to be a part uh, of the mammogram uh, exams, you would need to sign up to do that. Uh, you can't, unfortunately, you can't just show up uh, and expect to be a part of that. You need to sign up. So please, if you want to sign up uh, to be a part of that on Saturday, August 10th, please see Sister Stacy Ford. She has information uh, for you, uh, forms and what have you. Uh, please see her and make sure you get your name on the list Amen. because we want you to uh, take advantage of that. But you gotta sign up, amen. amen. All right, uh, and then uh, we have a card um, that uh, I was supposed to have uh, relayed to you a couple of weeks ago, uh, but I got in trouble for not doing it. Uh, from uh, the Powers, uh, brother Maurice and sister Melissa, it has been a challenge for us, uh, but you all have been right there with us and we are very appreciative of that. He says thank you for all, uh, thank you all rather for everything, especially uh, for the food that helped put some much needed pounds uh, back on me. Amen. And uh, he has uh, uh, this card says thank you for all the things you do and again, uh, this is with love from uh, Brother Maurice uh, and Sister Melissa Powers, and we'll have this out in the information center as well uh, for those who would like to read it in its entirety. Thank God for Brother Powers, uh, for God blessing him to be back with us. And he's gone through an ordeal, uh, but God has brought him through. Amen. 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 If I can believe it, God can achieve it. So help me to show it so that others will know it. As we prepare, to dismiss, we want to give God some praise as we're standing uh, and as we prepare to welcome our new sister uh, in Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Uh, stay faithful. Stay faithful. God going to bless you in a powerful way. Amen. Amen. Let's be prepared to be dismissed. God has smiled on me, he has set me free, and God has smiled on me, and he's been good to me. Before Richard uh, introduced it better. I believe this probably was left last Sunday because it was stuck in the pew at the back back there by where Carol Smith is at. It might have been left from last Sunday. So I want to thank Mike, won't it? Hey, Sister Clark. In case, in case, in case everybody didn't see you, Sister Chevy Clark, we like the Clark part. <laughs> We like the Clark part, Sister Chevy Clark Lewis. She may, she may be related to a Clark. You know? <laughs> let's, let's welcome Sister Chevy to the Boulevard again. Welcome to the Boulevard. It's sufficient. I brought you down here because we got to take your picture. <laughs> yes. Okay, Kendall, 
Alexander, you, it's now official. You are a member of the Church of Christ. These people are your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And Sister Lewis as well. She's, she's a new sister here, but she's been your sister all along. But this is your family. Uh, and we're going to do all that we can to nurture you and to encourage you, uh, to bring you up in the ways that strengthen you as a Christian. Be in Bible class with your family. Be in Bible class with us as we try to strive to get to heaven together. Okay? Church, let's welcome up to the Church of Christ. Welcome to the Church of Christ. Now let's welcome up to the Boulevard. Welcome to the Boulevard. It's official. So I wonder did your brother cry for you because you cried for him last week. <laughs> it, it was so lovely to hear her sister was crying because he got baptized and now she's put our Lord on baptism. And, uh, so it's just wonderful. Uh, we are we are growing here um, at the church. We have this is our twelfth membership in the last two weeks. So uh, oh ten. This is ten. I'm sorry, Amen. ten. So we're just so grateful, and so we still have lots of room. Yes. And there are lots of room. We're we're just looking forward to adding new uh, Christians every day because we are a loving family. We're just gracious and grateful for everyone uh, who come to visit here and place membership here and be a part of this family because. I got room to love everybody. Amen. So I hope you all got room to love me as back, but we are loving the church and we just want everyone to know that this is a place to belong. Uh, let us go to God together in prayer. Hey, just before we pray, Kendall, I want to give you a bag that's from the Boulevard Church of Christ that has a Bible, a, a, a journal, an ink pen, and all the stuff and tools that you would need to study and as we work, work with you. I, I'm not for sure if uh, Michael received his last week. He did. Okay, thank you so much. She didn't, she didn't like the idea when they said back to school next week. I seen a frown on her face when they said back to school. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we woke up with you on our mind and you in our hearts, and we're just grateful that we had this opportunity to come out and to worship you and to praise you. And to be a witness not only to your magnificent work, but be a witness to uh, these wonderful words of encouragement this morning from your preach man, uh, helping us to understand worship and guiding us in a way that helps build us and, and give us a greater understanding and purpose for the reason we come in here on Sunday morning. We just thank all of those who are present this morning. We just pray, kind God, that each one of us as members would find it in our hearts to be a part of worship, be a part of Bible study, be a part of evening worship as we try to support those who can't make it on Sunday morning. We just ask you, Father, to continue to strengthen us to grow and mature in ways that we can help make your place here a kingdom of worshipers and praisers who love you. We thank you, Father, for this morning, for these two who come down this morning and standing with us, Sister Claude, uh, Shelby, and uh, and Sister Kimberly, Alexander, if we just pray, kind of God, that you'll be with both of those uh, as they have placed their membership here and as they converted themselves into Christianity. We just ask you, Father, to bless and strengthen each of them. Bless and strengthen us, Father, that we might demonstrate uh, the kind of love and desire that each of them have to be a part of us. And as we welcome them, Father, we hope that they welcome us into their lives as well. Strengthen and guide us, Father, as we journey in our lives. Be with us as we depart now and go to our separate destinations, including our visitors, Father. We just ask you to be with each of us. And Father, keep us safe and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.